So today, we all get to sit here real time and write a story together. This story is really exciting because it's not just my story, it's not just your story, it is our story as a collective world. This story starts something like this. In the year 2016, a world, our world, is going through a period of major change and growth. This change in growth comes in the form of, for the first time in history, we have five generations living, breathing, working, learning, training together. Now, I know some of you may be sitting here going, well, lady, that's not new information. I know there's four generations out there. Did you know there was a fifth? And oh, by the way, by the way there's a sixth coming up very soon as well. So knowing that there are five generations out there and understanding the implications of what that means to us is a completely different story. So what I'm here to ask us is, do we understand these implications? Now, I'm going to ask you today to be characters and co-authors in this story with me. Now, our story is going to be nonfiction. So you need some statistics to start off with. Look at all of these statistics. They're pretty amazing. Look at this. 10,000 baby boomers retire every day. By 2016, which is like right now, look at how many millennials we have. 70 million belong to that generation. And Gen Z 2020 is coming up rapidly behind them. And guess what? In four years, there will be five generations in the workforce. One in four baby boomers will never retire. Does that scare you millennials out there? Ooh, good, no. All right, 31, almost 32% of our workforce is 65 to 74 years old. So those are the statistics that we are living in a world right now with five generations. Now, every story has a cast of characters and they need to be rich and diverse and you need to love to hate them, kind of like a reality show, right? So who are these cast of characters? Well, this is who they are. We have traditionalists. We have baby boomers. We have Gen X which, and millennials, Gen Y and Gen Z 2020. This is our cast of characters. How many of you see yourselves in these cast of characters? May not be what you look like, but you're up there, right? OK, so before I get to this, and talk a little bit about it. I'm not here today to break down each uh, generation and to, to give you all the characteristics and to tell you what's good and bad and the pros and cons. I get emails every day about how bad millennials are and I just delete it. Because there's a lot of you in the room, I know my audience, right? Um, so what we want to do is what we want to think about is how being in these different generations has really shaped us. Each generation has lived through a different period of time with a transformational event. We've had different cultures and, and sports and pop culture and education and medicine advances and technology advances. I mean, think about what we've heard today. That is what shaped us as generations. So, with this cast of characters, I thought it would be fun today to see who we actually have in the room. So I want a representative from each generation to bravely come down and take a piece of fruit. And I want to start with our traditionalist, someone who was born between 1900 and 1945. Do we have a brave traditionalist in the room that's going to come down and take this piece of fruit? Do we have any traditionalists in the audience? Or are you just not going to admit that you're that old? Oh, I see one over here. Can I throw it at you? No, Lord, no. <laughs> there you go. All right, I'm throwing it out there. All right, do I have anyone who is a baby boomer? Now, don't eat the fruit. Hold on to it. We're coming back to it. Do I have a baby boomer who wants this banana? I can't see you. Where are you? All right, here. You're a baby boomer. <laughs> do I have anyone that's Gen X who wants to come take these grapes? Thank you. All right. And these are not sour grapes, by the way. 
because sometimes Jit X is considered sour grapes. Don't kill me, cameraman, for walking. All right. Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of hands for the next group. Who are my millennials in the room? Raise your hands. So the camera, who, how many millennials do we have? Oh, my gosh. So do you guys see how you're proving my statistics? About 50% of our workforce and 50% of this audience are what? Mangoes. So who wants it? <laughs> All right, you raised your hand very quickly, so you get a mango. All right, the fruit does not really represent anything. I thought about doing that, but it doesn't work. Okay, <laughs> lastly but not least, do I have any Gen Zs, 2020s, born after 1997? Oh, she's trying to make you raise your hand. Oh, good. I didn't think I would have anyone. Here, I'm not throwing it because, yeah, I am. That'll be more fun. Oh. <laughs> First time in TED history somebody got knocked out. Okay, so you can see here, look at all of these differences. Don't eat the fruit, we're coming back to it. Okay, look at all of these differences here. You can see the cultural events that's happened. You can see technological events that have happened. You can see all of this. So what does this mean to us? Wow, we've got to be really cognizant when we're out there living and breathing and training and working and teaching and understand all these different generations. That's the key. So one of the strategies that I'm gonna talk about today as we're writing our story, I've got three for us. There's only three chapters in the story. And you're gonna help me craft the narrative and you get to write the end of the story. One of the, one of the things that I hear all the time is about stereotypes. How many of you hear these stereotypes? Traditionalists don't like technology. Gen Y are too busy plugged into their headphones to even pay attention, right? Gen Xers are out there only for themselves. That's not really true. But there's a lot of different stereotypes out there. Did anyone see the movie The Intern? Oh, a lot of you saw that. Robert De Niro plays a traditionalist, and he's 70, he says it in the movie. He retires, a high-powered executive. He retires, and what happens? He's bored with his life. He has no meaning. He wants something to do. So he goes to work for Anne Hathaway's company, and he helps mentor her. So here's a scene from the movie, and it's going to set this up for us. Hey, I need you for two minutes uninterrupted. Okay. Remember a few weeks ago we talked about the senior intern program? No. Really? We had a, we had a whole big conversation about it. We did? OK, remind me, seniors in high school or college? No, 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 no. Seniors in life, older people. Hold on, what? I told you I felt like we needed to do an outreach program. You definitely seemed to be liking the idea, so I set it in motion. It's going to be great. Hold, please. You're hiring senior citizen interns? There's been a ton of research on this, and the results are actually incredible. I mean, imagine having an intern with a lifetime of experience as opposed to somebody who spent the last four years of their life playing beer pong. All right. How many of you millennials have spent the last four of your lives playing beer pong? Well, if you're Kevin Andrews, probably so. OK. <laughs> All right. So the first chapter in our book starts with X. What do we have to do? Cross out the stereotypes. Just because Robert De Niro was old doesn't mean he doesn't know what he's doing. Just because some of us are young doesn't mean we know what we're doing. We have to cross out the stereotypes. I had someone send me this, and I thought it was pretty funny because I knew I was doing this talk today. The generation of today are so allergic to everything, future wars will be fought by throwing bags of peanuts and cat hair at each other. OK, stereotypes. Let's just cross out the stereotypes. Don't buy the hype. Don't let it influence you. Understand who you are. Now, the impact to this is so cool when we start looking at it. The impact is to corporate America. The impact is to higher education, technology, politics, Hollywood. You know how big this impact is? Look how long Harvard's been studying this since 2006. I love this. What do younger workers want? What do the middle generation want? What do older employees want? You know my favorite thing they say here is what? Your move. What are you going to do? Higher education is feeling this because we've got professors who've been here for a while. And we've got millennials who want what? New technology, fresh ideas, to use Blackboard, to use all of these tools. And are we equipping our professors and our faculty members with the right tools to be able to engage and train the new generation? That's the key. You know how cool this is? 
Even Rocky has to think about it. Rocky Sylvester Stallone is his real name, if you don't know that. Rocky wrote, Sylvester Stallone, wrote Rocky how many years ago? 40 years ago. How many of you saw Creed, the spinoff with Apollo Creed's son? Sylvester Stallone said, I wasn't the right person to write this movie. I had to bring in younger writers to write it because they don't, I don't understand the new generation. So if Rocky is paying attention to this, we need to be paying attention to this. Think about it right now. We are in a political firestorm. If you're, God, I want to say his name, but Donald Trump or um, Hillary Clinton, you've got to think about what? Four generations of voters and what's going to appeal to you. The impact to this is huge. The impact of this is huge to all of you because you're in classrooms, you're in project groups, you're in research labs, you're managers, you're CEOs, you're out there working with all these different generations. You're doctors who have patients. You're teaching kids. I mean, it's amazing the impact here. So we have to really start thinking about this. So let's look at chapter two, which is the why. So X is stereotypes. Y is know your own story. This is my story. I had to create this for a conflict management course. We had to sit down and think about who we are. So I had to think about it. I'm white. I'm Gen X. I'm a mom. I had to start thinking about what my story was. And you know what? I'd never done that before. So it was really great at my age, which will remain nameless, but I'm Gen X. It, will, it, it was good to go back and do that. So I encourage you to think about your story. This is just one part of the story. The other part of the story that's most important is your communication style. Do you know how you communicate? Do you know how you like to be communicated to? There's a great tool out there that I use called the DISC assessment. So now, not only are you Gen X or Gen Y, you also have a communication style. That's important to know. This is important to know because diversity is no longer just gender and race like it was when I was growing up in Gen X. Now it's what? Communication styles, conflict styles. It's how do I learn? Now, there's a lot of debunking, as some of you may know, about, about learning styles um, in higher education. I still believe in learning styles because you need to know how you learn. Is your professor going to tell you how you learn? Thank you for shaking your head, Mango Millennial. No, you've got to know how you learn. You also need to understand how do you manage conflict. There's a great tool out there, the Thomas Kilman Conflict Instrument, which will help you understand how you manage conflict. VARC's assessments, which will help you with your learning styles. You also need to know your motivation style. What motivates you intrinsically? What motivates you extrinsically? Am I getting what I need from my career, from my class, from my job, from my project? If you're not, you need to think about that. Lastly, rewards and recognitions. How do I like to be rewarded? When you start getting into all, all this millennial stuff, it's really interesting. Gen X, we want money. Millennials may want time off. Traditionalists want to be told they do a great job. So we have to know what motivates, not only generationally, but also individually. Now, I have a son who's eight years old. And so as a mom, I have to advocate for him to help him understand his communication style, to help him understand how he manages conflict, which is not to hit another kid, OK? So I have to advocate for him. What I'm here to share with you is you have to advocate for what? Yourselves. So understanding all of this will help you understand your story. And these are the great tools that are out there for you. So yes, it's great to understand if we go back and look at this, but this is the heart of what you need to understand from your story. So that's the why. I want you to leave here today thinking about my story and how can I craft this narrative to be an advocate for myself. So the Z part of our story is zealous. Being zealous about first crafting your story and then being an advocate for yourself to understand your story. Don't let people put you in a corner just because you're a millennial, or don't let people put you in a corner just because you're a traditionalist. You want to think about who you are as an individual, how you fit into your generation, and then what that really means. 
And what I found in my research and training and teaching is when I help people become those advocates, what it does is it helps open the door to understand another's story. So I just don't see you as part of a generation. I understand who you are, what you need, and how we can best work and learn together. So this story is not just my story. It's not just your story. It's the story of all of us because guess what? We're all here. We're all part of this world. We're all part of these different generations. Now, this bowl right here represents our world. Work with me on this analogy. I need my generational fruit people to come down here with me if you would. No, don't throw it at me. Come on. Will you walk down here with me? I need you to come down here with me. My mango millennial, where's my banana boomer? Come on down here, don't be shy. There's a point to this. Come here, put your mango in a bowl. Stand right here if you would. I'm a Gen X, I, I tell you what you have to do. Boomer, stand right here. Okay, where's our tomato, our traditionalist? Okay, don't throw it, don't throw it at me. All right, stay right here if you would. I want us all to look here. These are all of the generations that we have represented in this world. Guess what? We're all what? Different in texture, in size, in shape, in color. But guess what? If we implement our XYZ strategies, we will all be able to coexist and survive and thrive in a multi-generational world. Thank you.